Everything has come down to this. The series is tied 2-2. Winner goes on in this particular tournament. Spawning at the top left position, an absolute god of StarCraft Brood War, known as the Emperor. We have Slayer's Boxer. Boxer actually playing here under Kaiser's account. He needed uh, to use this account to play on the same server as his opponent, spawning at the top right position as the yellow, orange Protoss player, Complexity Cruncher. Cruncher's actually become very well known in the past couple of months, largely because he knocked out Idra in the TSL 3, and there was so much BM at the end of that series. It was actually really entertaining to watch. I watched it live, and it was pretty, pretty entertaining to say the very least. So Complexity, you know, becoming more, uh, well, Complexity's becoming a more well-known clan. They've only been around for a few months as well, and Cruncher as well, certainly making a name for himself. We're going to see what kind of builds these players go for here on Shakura's Plateau. They have spawned on the same side of the map, so the rush distance is just a little bit shorter than it could be. But regardless of that, this map certainly conducive to uh, fast expanding. Of course, you do have a ramp leading up to your naturals, so as a Protoss player, you can wall off the top of this ramp quite easily, pick up your natural expansion, uh, you know, earlier than you can on many other maps. We actually have a very early scouting probe here from Cruncher. He scouted after the pylon, which is pretty common on four player maps. So after getting the scouting intel, the Crunch Probe is going to be forced out pretty soon, as soon as this barracks completes. Just keep an eye on the production tab, see what kind of builds these guys go for. Uh, there's an assimilator on the way, so no super crazy fast expansion or, you know, two gate opening or anything like that unorthodox from Cruncher. Uh, he's going pretty standard uh, this far into the match. Now things are, you know, they're going to be another couple minutes before things really get heated up here. Just want to kind of chat with the uh, viewers for a moment. I just want to say my channel's been a little bit quiet as of late. I, I mean, I work too, and I only work part time normally, so I can actually have time for you know my channel and, and putting up a lot of videos. In the past few weeks, I've had to work uh, full time. Just well, in the past week or two, and for the next week or so, just because it gets so busy where I work. Uh, you know, the back to school time. So that should change. And in the coming weeks, there's going to be so much more content going up on my channel. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update about that. I'm very excited to be casting this game. It's been such a long time since I, uh, you know, even casted uh, a StarCraft 2 match, um, at least consistently. I used to be able to cast a lot more, and that's what we're going to be doing, uh, you know, very soon on my channel. A lot more content. We actually have. Uh, this command center now nearly uh, nearly complete down at the natural with a bunker on the high ground as well. And a couple of more barracks going up as well. We can see there's absolutely no gas whatsoever uh, being mined by Slayer's Boxer. In Cruncher's base, he now has both assimilators complete. Warp gate research on the way. Uh, just forcing out another sentry as well. So that's kind of interesting. Opening with two sentries going to be able to delay any kind of aggression that Boxer may have planned. I guess that's what Cruncher kind of assumed, but uh, his assumption way off because we have uh, a very fast uh, expansion here, which again makes sense given the map. So I'm wondering exactly what Cruncher is thinking at this point, what he wants to do. He is putting down a robotics facility and a couple of more gateways as well. I like how spread out Cruncher's buildings are. It's not like one scan. In fact, it would be impossible for a single scan to, to see the robotics and the uh, gateways and another gateway here. So could this be an all-in from Cruncher? He is going for gate robo. And if Cruncher doesn't put down a nexus in the next couple of minutes, I mean, it's certainly going to be an all-in. And it wouldn't make any sense for him to put a Nexus down anytime soon either. Um, just because that's like throwing away the timing that he's trying to set up. Warp Prism on the way. I'm pleased to see that. We don't see nearly enough Warp Prism action. I'm sure we will after the patch goes live. For those of you who don't know, patch 1.4. 1.4 is on the public test realm. And I made a video about those patch notes. One of the big changes though is on the Warp Prism. As the Warp Prism pops out here we can see it has 100 hit points and 40 shields. In 1.4, the War Prism is actually going to have 100 shields. That is a gigantic buff. 
like, you know, 20 hit points, maybe 30 or 40 would even be p pushing it. But an extra 60 shields is a lot, a lot, a lot. Oh, I know what he's going to do. I've seen this happen before. Actually, maybe not. I guess this is a little different. I thought maybe Cruncher was going to try to drop sentries in the main and then force field the ramp. But given the positioning... Oh, big loss. I'm sorry, Cruncher. Oh, my God. If he lost that warp prism... That would have basically been GG, but he barely kept it alive. Um, we're going to have to see what Cruncher wants to do. He's certainly not going to be able to drop in the main like I've seen other Protoss players do uh, versus a fast expanding Terran where you drop sentries and then force field the ramp and then use the uh, phasing mode of the warp prism to uh, just warp in more units and reinforcements and continually uh, force field the ramp. It's going to take out these rocks here, and we do have a Nexus on the way, so I mean... Cruncher certainly trying to transition out of this. He has invested so much in his army. Let's actually take a look. Um, you can see 2,200 resources as opposed to 1,425 uh, for Boxer. So uh, Cruncher has spent a lot more on his army, and we're going to see if it pays off. You know, he needs to do something. I don't know what he's doing here with this kind of elevator tactic. He's dropping one Stalker. He left his Stalker behind here on the high ground. What is he really trying? This Stalker, though, getting a ton of uh, scouting. Well, he doesn't actually see uh, these two barracks, but it can easily be assumed given the sheer volume of uh, Terran bio units. The economy, though, really starting to kick in for Boxer. Boxer's leading by nine workers. Of course, he's got mules as well. He's had the second base up and running for a very long time. And now starting to tech up a little bit as well. Um, I mean, after the three barracks, factory and then the starport he's got a reactor finishing up on the factory as well which he's going to then switch the starport onto so he can pump out medevacs two at a time this war prism really hasn't done a lot just yet um and i don't think no cruncher has not used the robotics facility for anything except for this war prism and it has done dilly squat so cruncher is certainly behind at this point he's behind by 13 supply and just uh tailing Boxer a little bit uh, in the income on the income tab as well. We do have Colossus on the way though and a forge going down. So it's still really too tough to call. We'll just have to sit tight, wait and see what's going to happen here. It's cool because I have no idea who's going to win this match. Although this was a tournament match um, it was only played a couple of days ago but um, yeah, I mean I didn't watch it when Dana and Husky casted it so we'll have to see what's going on here. Oh, interesting force field placement. I'm not sure how truly effective that would have been. I mean, I guess they just delayed the Marines a little bit so that Cruncher can try to escape with this War Prism. He uh, has done a little bit of damage so far, but certainly not enough to justify um, the investment, the very early investment in the robotics facility and the uh, War Prism. We do have a drop as well. Four Marines, a couple of Marauders in that one, and six and one in the second Medivac, how, when is Cruncher going to know about this? Not until the very last hit. Right now, he finds out how quickly will Cruncher react to deal with this. So many Terran units. So many probes get taken out. Four have been killed at least already. Focusing down a couple of pylons as well. This pylon is going to effectively supply block the Protoss player as well. And finally, with these Colossi making their way back along with the gateway units, um, they get to kill uh, some of the infantry, but... The two medevacs escape, and it looks like all that was lost was three marines. So certainly a favorable exchange for Slayer's Boxer. Slayer's Boxer looking to be in very good shape here. Wonder if he's going to go for a two-base timing. Certainly could be the case. He's getting a ton of upgrades right now. He's got two e eBays uh, pumping out upgrades. He's got plus two weapon and plus one armor on the way for his bio. Protoss player, on the other hand, uh, just getting plus one... Um, attack at this point. He doesn't have any other upgrades uh, just yet, so it's going to be very difficult for uh, Cruncher to deal with a, like a straight-up engagement versus Boxer just because of how upgraded his units are and, I mean, now just eking the advantage further and further ahead. Now the supply uh, that was once only a deficit of like 15 or 20 is now upwards of 30 that uh, Boxer is enjoying here. Just Boxer choosing a very effective build on this map. Getting that command center down um, quickly, but safely as well. 
and then just massing up a gigantic army now as he's been able to turtle pretty hard but uh, apply some pressure um, as well you know just uh, a couple of medevacs the sneak attack there wasn't enough spotting from cruncher he had no idea it was coming and oh man the war prison does get taken out and this sentry not doing much either another mistake by cruncher here I'm interested to now see what went on in the previous games because, I mean, Cruncher did take two games off of Slayer's Boxer in this series, but it looks like we're just going to have a devastating timing here as these uh, two ghosts out already and then two more popping out right now. So this is sort of the timing that we're going to be uh, hitting here at the same time. Uh, Boxer's finished his third command center and has now landed it. So this is a good time to put pressure on. If you're expanding, you don't necessarily want to commit units to an attack uh, while you're expanding in case you get your army crushed, you're basically going to lose. But if you can just put in, you know, some pressure, pick your spots carefully, can usually be pretty effective. Cruncher here forced to give up the two Zelnaga watchtowers. An extra scan going off here as Boxer presses forward. Cruncher here just still retreating. He does have four Colossi out already, uh, with more on the way. He's got one more on the way. I'm not sure if it's going to make it in time. There's an Archon out, and there's just so much firepower here, though. Like, a ton of Marines and Marauders with upgrades. 2-1 with Stim, with Combat Shields, with Concussive Shells. And uh, we're going to have to see what happens here. Alright, it looks actually to be a very close engagement so far, but just again, too much too much firepower. I mean, Boxer did take some damage. Um, units lost, tab, about double or even more so for Boxer. I was trying to take away the pain here at the bottom. You're supposed to be able to do it with Control w and that's what I was trying to do during that final engagement, which is why I just paused there for a moment. But um, yeah, I have no idea why uh, that was the case doesn't really matter. Boxer takes this series. 3-2 uh, to two is the final score in this series. Hope you guys enjoyed this game. And as I mentioned earlier, I mean, stay tuned on my channel, especially over the next, well, you know, starting now, I'm going to be doing a lot of really hard work on this channel. I've worked hard on it for about a year now, and, you know, I'm done school and graduated, so as September has now hit, you know, it's kind of weird not to be going back to school, and, you know, so I'm getting my life together and I just have so much fun making these videos so stay tuned for many more I'm gonna be just doing a ton more content and really um, you know just treating this more like a job and dedicating a lot more time to this on a daily basis doing StarCraft 2 commentaries I wanna do some StarCraft 2 strategy videos along with Diablo 3 as well those are the only two games that for sure I will continually do consistent content for um, and I may play around with some other games as well depending